Good evening. Thank you for all coming and joining the celebration of Courtney and Brian's wedding and the start of their life together. It's really a pleasure having you all here. Very excited. I actually have to collect myself right now. It's like unbelievable. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to the Peters family and especially Brian's parents, Audrey and Al, Brian's sister Katie, and the immediate Peters family and their extended family, some of whom have come down from Long Island. Welcome. Courtney knew that Brian was right for her from the very beginning. In fact, she told me this within one month of them dating. And when she told me this, I didn't tell her this, what I was thinking, but I said to myself, not so fast. I said to myself, I need to do my own due diligence. And that's what I proceeded to do. So uh, they went on for a couple months, and uh, Brian offered to detail Courtney's car. And that's pretty impressive. For those who don't know, Brian had a detailing car background in, in college and high school. And uh, he offered to do her car, which in my mind showed that he was very observant. Because the inside of Courtney's car hadn't seen a washcloth in about four years. Anyway, Brian on his day off on a Saturday came over and he arrived at 8 o'clock in the morning showed me he was very punctual, due diligence, kicking in. And he arrived with the finest detailing equipment I've ever seen in my life. He had the special washcloths, he had the, the dust busters, he had the special brushes, he had the cloths, he had the armor all, he had everything. Very impressed, but his finest tool was a worn toothbrush. And this is a toothbrush that I know went in places that no human has ever gone. <laughs> and this toothbrush was in for a challenge with Courtney's car. So I left to play golf that day, and I was gone six hours. And I came back, and I come down the driveway, and Brian's still working on this car. <laughs> now what did that tell me? He's very diligent, hardworking, bit of a perfectionist, and actually unselfish because he was doing Courtney's car and not his on his day off. I began to think to myself, he only offered to do my car. <laughs> this due diligence thing would have been over a long time ago. So, but he did. He didn't offer to do my car. So the due diligence had to go on and so does the speech. <laughs> And what I noticed about Brian also was that he was very polite, very respectful. He always called me Mr. Fox. And that's, that's nice, I guess. I mean, you know, he called me Mr. Fox, and not many people call me that, but he called me Mr. Fox to show that Audrey and Al raised him to be very polite, respectful. And, uh, but I was starting to get a complex because he never called Cheryl Mrs. Fox. Always called her Cheryl from the, right, from the very beginning. I'm thinking to myself, what, what's going on here? I mean, I, this, do I look that much older? Is she that much colder than I am that he has to call me Mr. Fox all the time? Don't answer that question. But anyway, so time goes on, and uh, I could see that Brian and Courtney were gelling together, and they were, you could see that they were coming together as a couple, and it was very obvious. But one Saturday, Brian. Now, Courtney, actually, I could see him huddling, like wanting to talk to one another, like they wanted to ask me a question. And finally, Courtney came up to me around, I don't know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and said, Dad, Brian would like to play basketball with you on a Saturday afternoon. And for those who don't know, I've been playing basketball at the same gym for 20 years in Chestnut Hill. And I was quite honored that he wanted to play with me. And I brought him to play basketball with me. And in fact, all my Wiley veteran friends were there, and they welcomed him with open arms. And, in and he was even picked on my team. And we were in the heat of a battle on, a, on, a, on the first game. And I had the ball at the top of the key. And all of a sudden, 
I hear from under the basket, Mr. Fox, Mr. Fox. <laughs> and, I, and I look over, and, and it's Brian gesturing for the ball. <laughs> now, I knew by then that I wanted Brian to be my future son-in-law. I knew. I knew that he was a great guy, he treated Courtney wonderfully, I knew Courtney loved him, and I knew that if I did not give him the best bounce pass of his life, <laughs> he, this could sabotage the whole relationship. So, I gave him a bounce pass that only Pete Maravich would be jealous of. And it went into his arms, and I knew that my job was done. And it was left to Courtney to finish the deal. <laughs> now, some of you might ask, did he make the basket? <laughs> and my answer to that is, I'm just not ready to talk about it. It's too painful. <laughs> so, Brian, I want to welcome you to our family. I'm honored for you to be my son-in-law. It's a privilege that you are my son-in-law. I have a little gift that I like to give you as, as a token of my appreciation for being in my family. And I'd like you to open it. And I think it's a gift that you can use quite often. And in fact, I would suggest that you use it as soon as you return from your honeymoon. Take a look at it. Toothbrush! <laughs> <laughs> For John's car. <laughs> Courtney, you are so beautiful. We're so proud of you. You're such a great daughter. As beautiful as you are on the outside, I think I, I know I'm a little biased about this, but I know, I think I, all your friends can say the same thing. You are infinitely more beautiful on the inside. You have heart and soul. You're compassionate and passionate. The kids that were at that church tonight were your students. I've lived with you for the last two years to see how hard and dedicated you are with your students. You are a fantastic teacher. And those kids are the luckiest kids in the world to have you as, your, as their teacher. And anybody that has you as a teacher in the future is the luckiest kid in the world. You are fantastic. We are so proud of you. It doesn't take a rocket scientist like Brian. By the way, he is a rocket scientist. <laughs> and it sounds a lot better than a lawyer or a doctor. Hey, hey Brian. I sign a little rocket scientist. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> to know that they are right for each other. I didn't really knew, need, need to know due diligence to figure that out. You can see it very early on. They connect it, they communicate, they are very comfortable with one another. And I think maybe all of you can see that even tonight. And I am very happy that they have found each other. In fact, I think one of their greatest qualities that I have seen is that Brian's qualities have made Courtney a better person. And Courtney's qualities have made Brian a better person. That's really important. I think you two have become, as a couple, better as a whole than you are in, as an individual. So I'd like to make a toast to Brian and Courtney. That you continue to communicate with one another, that you continue to fight life's battles together, that you continue to love and grow your love throughout your life, and simply that you have a wonderful life together. Yeah.